Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice algebra problem. We have a plus b equals 4 times the square root of ab, and we're going to evaluate the ratio a over b. I'll be presenting two methods, and let's get started. So for the first method, first of all, I want you to consider, since ab is under, under the radical, that needs to be greater than or equal to 0. But notice that if a is 0, then b has to be 0, but that's not possible. Therefore, a and b must be different from 0. So a does not equal 0, b does not equal 0, and this implies a, b is always positive. Okay, so a, b must be positive. Let's keep that in mind. And then consider manipulating our equation. So I would like to take away 4 square root of AB from both sides. In other words, bring this to the left-hand side and then make it a, like a full equation, whatever. I, I was going to say quadratic, but this is not quadratic yet. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to divide both sides or everything by B. So we're going to divide by b, and you'll see in a little bit why it's helpful, a over b plus b over b, over b which is 1. And then if you divide this, you're, you're going to get square root of a, b divided by b. Now one thing to keep in mind here, if you separate the square root of a, b as square root of a times square root of b, and then write the b as square root of b times square root of b, then these are going to cancel out, leaving us with this expression. So from here, we get something nice. This is why we're actually dividing uh, both sides by that. We're going to get the square root of a over b, which is obviously the same thing as this one, right? As long as a and b are both positive. We, it's not necessarily true uh, because if one of them is negative, the other one is negative. If they're, if they're both negative, is this going to work? That's another question to ask, right? But uh, one thing to keep in mind is, since a plus b is equal to a positive expression, that means that a and b cannot be both negative at the same time. So that's another thing to consider. Anyways, so we got this expression now, and we're going to use substitution, because it makes sense, doesn't it? Let's go ahead and replace the square root of a, b with something. How about x? We haven't used x for a while. And then a over b is just going to be x squared, right? And we get x squared plus 1 minus 4x equals 0. Now this is quadratic. Let's go ahead and subtract 1. And then add 4 to complete the square. Remember how you find that number. Half of 4 squared. And then the left hand side becomes x minus 2 squared. And by taking square roots, this is actually how the quadratic formula came about you can go ahead and uh, square root both sides. That gives us x minus 2 equals root 3, or x minus 2 equals negative root 3. This equation has two solutions. It's quadratic. Add 2 to both sides, and you get the solutions. And both of these values, by the way, x is the square root of a or b, so x needs to be positive as well. x must be positive. So that's something we always need to check because especially when you're squaring both sides in an equation, you might be introducing extraneous solutions, so on and so forth. In this case, we're good because 2 is greater than root 3, so this is positive, and this is definitely a positive quantity. But this is the, not the answer because x is equal to the square root of a over b, which is what we're looking for. So we do need to find a over b from here. So if x is equal to... 2 plus root 3, which is the square root of a over b. By squaring both sides, we get 7 plus 4 root 3. That's one of the values of a over b. And for the other one, we're going to use 2 minus root 3. And then if you square both sides again, you're going to get the conjugate. So if you have two conjugates and you square them, their squares are also conjugates, which is nice about conjugates. So these are going to be the solutions, and they are both good because they are both positive. Okay, great. So this is basically the first method. Let's go ahead and talk about the second method. And if there's a third way to do it, I'm pretty sure there is. Uh, please let me know in the comment section down below. Okay, the second method. 
So let's rewrite the original problem. A plus B equals 4 times the square root of AB. And again, we're looking for A over B. Okay, so the second method is kind of nice because especially when you're dealing with ratios and proportions, then this is a really cool method because it simplifies the process. Now think about it. There are infinitely many values for A and B because we have a single equation and there are two variables and we don't even have a requirement that they should be integers or rational, right? So there's going to be obviously infinitely many solutions to this equation. So you have a choice which means you can choose a particular value for a and b. In this case, I'm going to pick b equals 1, because if b is equal to 1, then a over b is just going to equal a over 1, which is a. So in other words, replace b with 1 in this equation and solve for a. Easy, right? You're going to have to solve for a single variable. Not much, not much of a difference, no big deal, but still an improvement, right? Okay. Now, if you replace b with 1, we get a plus 1 equals 4 times the square root of a times 1, which is 4 times the square root of a. Now, we have a radical equation, and we need to get rid of the radical. Actually, you don't have to, by the way. There are two ways to do it. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll talk about both. So we can kind of talk about 2a and 2b. I know some people don't like the joke, but I'm going to say it. 2b or not 2b. Okay, real quick. Now, first... Or what is 2a? Let's talk about 2a first. 2a is basically getting rid of the radical because that's what I said first. Square both sides and then you're going to get rid of the radical and just solve it as a quadratic. Easy, right? a squared plus 2a plus 1 equals 16a. Bring the 16 over a squared minus 14a plus 1. You can, again, complete the square if you like it, or you can go ahead and just use the quadratic formula because this is quadratic. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 196, minus 4ac, which is 4, divided by 2a, which is 2. 196 minus 4 is 192, and 192 can be written as 64 times 3. 64 is the largest perfect square that goes into 192. So this can be written as 4, 14 plus minus the square root of uh, 64 times 3, which is 8 root 3, divided by 2. And if you divide everything by 2, you get a equals 7 plus minus 4 root 3. Something that I like about this method is it gives you the answer directly because a is what we were looking for. Remember, we replaced b with 1 and we're looking for a. Great, so those are the answers, same as the first method. And let's talk about 2b, okay? Now, for 2b, I'm going to start from where we got the quadratic, a plus b equals 4 root a, just an alternative to solving this equation. Let's go ahead and replace square root of a with t, and this gives us t squared plus 1 equals 4t. And then we end up with the first method equation that we got with the first method. And remember what they were, t was 2 plus root 3 and 2 minus root 3. But t is the square root of a. So from here, a value is going to be either 7 plus 4 root 3 or 7 minus 4 root 3. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.